All right, so I want to welcome everybody this evening to our fall warbler identification class and uh, this is going to be great fun. Um, hope if you know your spring warblers pretty well, this should be easy breezy. Um, there will be some challenges and anybody who says that they can identify warblers, all of them, whatever is full of baloney. Um, there, it's some, there are some that are just really difficult. Um, and so I'm going to mention a few resources that I have used or uh, in the past, or if you have them at home. So after you finish your birding in the fall and looking at fall warblers, finished up wherever you are, you may want to use things like um, the Peterson Guide to Fall or to Warblers. It has, of course, a lot of maps and information, but it does have plates of warblers uh, by Peterson. And uh, so you can do some comparison there. This is a little older book, but it's still useful. A more recent book is called The Fall Warbler Guide, or The Warbler Guide, sorry, I'm all on four fall warblers. And this one is really very good. It, it covers a ton of stuff. It has pictures, it has sonograms, it has a lot of stuff. So I refer to this quite a bit. And of course, if you have a Sibley guide, whether it's the entire North America or the east, east side or east coast or the eastern region, um, utilize that as well too. Again, most of the field guides, whether it's drawings or photographs, they're all good. And one other small guide, I mean, it's not very thick, but this is the field guide to birds of the Cleveland region. And what's nice about this guide is it covers Northeast Ohio. I mean, there's a map in the middle of a centerfold and there's all these counties that are covered everywhere from Lorraine, Medina, Summit, Portage, um, Geauga Lake, Cuyahoga. And yes, it is a little dated. There may be some spots on here that, that, aren't, uh, that um, haven't made it yet that, that are out there. But um, it, it lists different places to visit. But what I really like are these bar graphs. It tells you when birds are arriving, what to expect. Um, there's th the thicker the bar, the more common they're going to be. And I'm going to refer to this book in one of my slides because it's it's very critical. So uh, if you can get this. It is through Kirtland Bird Club. And I think Marianne will put that uh, web address in Nancy? the chat. Nancy, can I interject something? Sure. Okay. So if anybody who's coming to these, I'm going to be coming to these Sunday walks with see, And I will bring a supply of these books. And if you want to buy them, at that point, I, I will gladly open up my trunk and, and do that. <laughs> How so, much are they? She has an unstable uh, connection, so. The green ones, the, the small one here is big bucks. We have a larger version. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Okay, lovely. That would be, that would be terrific. So those are just a few resources that you can use again after you're out, you've seen something you're like, oh, I, maybe you even carry them in your car. I don't know. Uh, but, it, you know, they, they will be helpful. Um, because one of the things I will do tonight, when I do this program is I'm going to show you almost like the best of the best photographs. Um, but then there again are going to be some challenges. If you do have any questions, you can type them in the chat. We'll try to get to them. Maybe Marianne will even get my attention, say, hey, there's a question about such and such. Or if anybody has a suggestion, again, put it in the chat. Um, I don't know. 
looks like we've got uh, 27 people. Yeah, if we just open it all up, people may be just talking all over the place. So we'll we'll just uh, try to keep the questions in the chat and uh, do that, all right? So now I'm gonna share my screen. Yeah, I hope everybody can, can see that all right, yes? Put a little thumbs up sign if you can, if that looks okay to you. Fall warbler class, yes? Marianne, thumbs up, looks good? Okay, fantastic. Go to the next slide, please. There you go. All right, so what to anticipate in this presentation, we're gonna review 31 species of warblers that generally pass through Northeast Ohio in the fall. We're gonna have a little quiz at the end of 10 birds to test our knowledge. And then a list of resources, uh, it will be on here as well too, with the names of books and the names of websites uh, and, and, and web addresses too. Now our field experiences, the last bullet point just sold out today. I could only limit our field experiences to 12 people and I got 12 people as of today. So, sorry. Yeah, because I wanted to make this a really close uh, group so that we could see things and look at things more carefully. That's why I didn't open it up to like 300 people uh, or more. So. Marianne will be helping with those field experiences as well, too. All righty. So really, of the 36 species of warblers that may pass through this part of Ohio, about 20 species look pretty much the same uh, in the fall as they looked in the spring. Yeah, they may be a little bit more subdued in color, but a lot of them, again, so we're we're doing great. I mean, gosh, if you know 20 species, that's good. Um, about 11 species molt into a somewhat or a vastly different plumage, and those can be the confusing fall warblers. Um, a lot of juveniles, the young of the year, can be much, much, much more dull, not have the certain field marks, and those can be a real challenge as well. Um, and then five species that tend, uh, tend not to be seen very often, uh, plus the hybrids, the Brewsters and Lawrences, uh, will not be covered. All righty. So Cerulean, Kentucky, Kirtlands, Prairie, and Worm Eating. Those will not be covered. All right. So migration, uh, it's really the seasonal shifting of populations from the breeding to the wintering habitats and then from wintering to breeding. And so right now we are in the midst of the fall uh, migration. Um, songbirds, shorebirds, waterfowl are certainly starting uh, to migrate as well. But we're gonna really focus on the, the songbirds. Uh, migration is predictable. So we can know when it's going to begin Generally, for shorebirds, it can begin in July, August, and then run a little bit into the fall. For songbirds, especially the warblers, we've already started um, like last week, and uh, thrushes are now starting to come through. And then generally, migration happens two times a year. So why do birds migrate? Well, it's not so much the cold. Uh, it is really due to the food supply. And the food supply, of course, dwindles once it gets cold. And that food supply tends to be insects and invertebrates. So the birds then move. Some are long distance migrants going down to places like Cuba, uh, Central America, South America. Um, and then there are short distance migrants that are say like the yellow warbler, which may just go to Florida um, or may just move a little further south from Ohio or from Canada moving into Ohio. So again, there's just a couple different migration patterns here. 
And of course, migration is hardwired into the bird's genes over the thousands of years of migration that has happened. If you are not familiar with this site, uh, it's called BirdCast. BirdCast, um, HTTPS uh, colon backslash backslash birdcast.info. Go to it. It's a terrific site. Um, it's run by Cornell Lab. You can see Colorado State University and University of Massachusetts in Amherst. And it will show you migration in real time, uh, generally nocturnal migrants. Um, now this one says inactive. That was because I put this picture up in March of 2022 or this past March and things had not started happening yet. But I'm gonna be showing you a couple of other slides that are really, really cool. Right, so this is one thing that can, you can take a look at is a forecast. This is not the actual migration, but it, it's forecast from the data that comes in primarily through eBird. So if you do not send stuff into eBird, again, information may be lacking on certain places, um, but on August 22nd, um, it was predicted and you can see on the on this uh, right hand side, <clears throat> the brighter the color, that white color means a lot of birds moving. And of course, you get down into the blue purple, and there's very few moving. Um, and then there's also places where you can see cloud formation and or some kind of precipitation. So of course, birds tend to not want to move through storms and, and rain. But on, on August 22nd, um, this was the this was predicted as to Ohio had a pretty good migration in southern part, even a little bit into the north. But woo, look at that bright, bright, bright yellow in Texas. Wow. So again, those those folks living there, or if you were visiting, um, had a really good migration. And this could be shorebirds and other nocturnal migrants. This is not so much raptors because they're, they're diurnal or daytime migrants. All right, so this one was the prediction for uh, last night, August 31st. Again, things are a little, little slower in Northeast Ohio, a little hotter down here in the Southwest part of the state. Uh, a lot of birds still kind of clustered up in uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, Upper Mi Michigan, and then of course this hot spot here in Kentucky, Tennessee, places like that. And this was just a prediction. This is the real time um, map that you can run uh, when you, there is a little cursor at the bottom that, and I'm not going to run that in, in real, uh, to have it move or anything, but if you click at the bottom, you can actually see when sunset starts, and it'll be a red line that goes across, and then when sunrise begins, and again, it'll be a yellow line that goes across, and of course, nocturnal migrants will get started uh, around sunset, and we didn't have sunset yet, but sunset was just beginning in places like Maine. Um, so this was uh, at six o'clock, okay? So six o'clock Eastern time, see that? All right, here's 10.10, 10 o'clock in the evening or 10 o'clock at night. Whoa, you can really see, oh, and here's the red line, that was sunset. So whoosh, it swooshed by and the birds were really starting to come through. So just take a good look at that. Another part of that dashboard is looking at a particular state or a particular county. Um, up in, the, up in this line right here, hopefully you can see my cursor. 
there would be a little space that says type in your state or your county. And of course, I live in Cuyahoga County, Ohio. For those in Summit County, you may want to you know, put that in. If you're going to be visiting somewhere else, you may want to look ahead. And so, um, so this was last night. And it started at 8 o'clock, but this was a little bit later. Um, I don't see the time when this was done. But um, it was high. There was high bird migration coming through. And so approximately 513,000 birds passing or have crossed Cuyahoga County. And then another part of that uh, dashboard in the bottom part of that, that map or that information that I just showed you are all kinds of graphs. Again, all created by or through eBird um, information. So as you can see, the, the birds moving through um, around 10 o'clock, it's, you know, getting pretty high. Um, the flight speed and direction, the altitude they're going, um, you can see there's quite a spike. Uh, so last night there was a, a good number of birds coming through because we had a, a much, much uh, cooler climate. Um, we had a little bit, I'm mean, sorry, much, much cooler evening. And uh, that will push birds from the north uh, down to us. And then on the very right, you can see that there is a, a map or I'm sorry, bar graphs showing some of the species that you expect. So if you were planning on going out today to a particular spot, Swainson's thrush are really coming through in bigger numbers now. Uh, the warbling vireo, again, pretty good sized numbers here. Mag Magnolia warblers, their numbers are beginning to grow. Baltimore orioles are beginning to wane, but still a pretty good number. Nashville's are coming in in good numbers. And then of course, there's several others that you can scroll down and take a look at. So, so it's uh, again, very, very, very useful. All right, so here's some of the birds that we like to see in the spring. Ooh, ah, we, that's what we do. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, look at that. Oh, look at these. Oh, so lovely. Love them. Oops, sorry. And we want to first start off with those warblers that don't change very much, right? So here's the 20 species. A couple of them I've doubled up, like blue-winged and golden-winged warbler are, go are going to be on one slide. Louisiana and northern water thrush are going to be on one slide. So there they are. And let's go alphabetically. So American Red Start, really not a whole lot of change from spring to fall. Yay! So you see a red start in the spring, the males look like that. You see a red start in the fall male, they look like that. If they're an adult male, if they are a young of the year male, they may have some black flecking, but they look a lot like the females. So, but males and females, do not change a whole heck of a lot. A um, couple of things to notice to notice of the birds is that um, they often fan their tail out and when they're moving about and they off, often do what's called fly catching. So they'll be in a tree bopping about and they see an insect flying in the air, poof, they'll go out and catch it and then come back to the tree. They have these little bristles on either side of their beak. They're called rictal bristles. And so they are pretty adept at catching uh, insects in the air. Get a good look at these birds. Black and white warbler, very well named. So a spring bird here in the, on the left. Uh, in the fall, they tend to get not quite as, as you notice, the black mask is not as prevalent on this bird. Uh, females will have a lot of buffy maybe on the flanks, but again, the rest of the bird is black and white. So it's really not that hard to, to identify. 
they both sexes do have black spots on the undertail coverts. And could I find a picture of that? No, but if I go to one of my resources, I can find the undertail of the birds and see those black spots. And, and of course, when you're birding, a lot of times you're looking straight up and you get warbler neck and you're like, oh, that one has black spots on its undertail coverts. Those are just the feathers that cover uh, the underside, part of the underside of the tail. And of course, as you notice from the spring photo, the birds will forage on the trees in the fall, the same way they do in the spring, very nuthatch-like, climbing around on the, on the bark, uh, on the trunks, on bigger limbs, uh, but they'll also be on smaller limbs too. Here's a bird that doesn't change either. Um, the males in the fall may have a little more greenish tint on their back, but really spring and fall, males and female black-throated blue warbler look pretty much the same. Uh, young of the year, females may not have this white spot on the wing. We call that a little handkerchief, uh, or it may be very, very small. So but just kind of take a look at the color of this female. I know a lot of people uh, bypass a lot of the female birds. They're not quite as showy, but this, this nice kind of a buffy grayish taupe brownish, but the back is not exactly brown. It has this hint of a, a bluish color to it. It's really pretty. Uh, she has this nice eyebrow, white eyebrow, and of course her little handkerchief very easy to identify spring and fall. Black-throated green warbler, again the spring male with a nice uh, yellow face and then the, the hefty black on the throat and breast. Fall, it kind of gets a little subdued. Um, this bird still has the olive green on the back, still has that yellow face. Um, the the Throat coloration may be dulled out, as you see on the bird on the left. The bird in the bottom right, again, uh, is really lacking that black uh, of the throat and upper breast, but you can still see, again, that yellow face will have the olive green back and all these stripes going down the flanks. Females tend to have less of those stripes and certainly less of the black down the throat and breast. Blue winged and golden winged warblers. Well, I tossed in a, a spring blue wing because they look the same in the fall. And this is a nice male. The females, of course, will have a little, um, little less uh, bright a color. Um, the golden winged warbler, there's a nice uh, female or fall bird, uh, even the males will have quite a, a dull, um, kind of washed out look to them, but, but they'll look pretty much the same. You'll be able to tell a blue winged and a golden winged warbler, I guarantee. The, the blue winged warbler has this black stripe through the eye, those bluish gray wings, uh, a couple of whitish wing bars that may smoosh together almost like a, a big wing patch. And the golden wing, kind of a tough one to find, but the black patch over the eye, the black throat, and the bright yellow patch on the wing. Canada warbler, they're moving through right now. They tend to be an earlier migrant, like late, uh, late August and early September. I don't know if there's many other warblers that have this uniform gray, gray head, neck, back, and wings. I mean, you really don't see, and even down to the tail, you really don't see a whole lot of change in color on the back of the bird. Pretty uniform, spring and fall. What does kind of get a little more subdued are the, is the necklace on the bird, the black striping and sometimes this spectacle, this yellow uh, going between the beak and the eye and then the ring around the eye, 
is again not quite as as bright, but you can still see that there is color on that eye around the eye, on that area between the eye and the beak called the lore, and then you do see some streaking on the breast. But this uniform gray along the head, back, neck, wings, tail is pretty distinctive. Common yellow throat. Um, males don't really change a whole lot from spring to uh, fall. So you see one with a mask, maybe the mask will have a little bit more flecking of white color or whitish in it uh, as new feathers grow in, uh, but it'll look pretty much the same. Uh, a young of the year male, you can see a little hint of a mask. You may even see some black feathers coming in around the eye. They tend to have a little yellower throat, whereas females and young of the year can be kind of dull. Uh, so, but they have olivey gray, uh, olivey brown green back, and then that yellow throat that kind of ends at the breast. It doesn't extend all the way under. Um, you may have a little yellowish under the tail. And they tend to like wetlands and brushy areas, wetlands in particular. So if you're near a wetland, this is a bird that may be in that area. Hooded warbler, again, really don't change from spring to fall. Um, that olive green back, the nice hood on the male. The female, Yep, I can see a hood there. Well, if you squint and turn your head a little bit. No, really, out in the field, you'll notice that, yeah, there's something around, you know, it's kind of going around the head. Females and, and young of the year will uh, often show this pattern. But one other thing to look for is as the birds are feeding, maybe they're flicking their tail or flying away from you, um, they have these bright white spots on the tail. The female's not quite as large, but but these bright white spots, almost almost jungle-like, I guess you could say. And uh, But again, when they flick their tail, uh, if you don't have a good view of the, of the front, maybe you'll get a, a, to check the back end and see that that tail has those bright, bright white spots. The Louisiana and Northern water thrush uh, look pretty much the same, spring to fall. Um, how do you tell the difference even in the spring? Well, uh, Louisiana water thrush, this one above, tends to be lighter underneath, almost white. The eyebrow, again, white. But notice the eyebrow, it's narrow in the front, in front of the eye, but as you go behind the eye, it flares out a little bit. Now, can you notice that in the field? Yes, if you're able to get your bead on a bird that's maybe feeding, walking, that kind of stuff. The northern water thrush is, has a yellowish tinge to its plumage underneath. Uh, and then the uh, eyebrow, that stripe over the eye, tends to be uniform from front to back. None of that flaring out in the back. And that also tends to have a yellowish tone to it as well. These birds do like to walk around on the ground. So they, that's where you want to look for them, both spring and fall. Nashville warbler, not much of a change really. Yes, you have a little bit more subdued in the fall, especially the females and the young of the year. Um, but I think of the bird as gray, olive, yellow. Gray, olive on the back, yellow underneath, breast and uh, under the tail, um, sometimes under the tail. It has a white belly though. All right, so gray head, olive back and wings, yellow undersides. You notice on the male, these nice 
bright eye ring that's white. And you can see in the fall, females, young of the year will have an eye ring, uh, but maybe not quite as bold and not quite as bright. But gray, olive, yellow. No wing bars, no striping on the wings at all. Northern Perula, it is our tiniest warbler that we have coming through. And in the spring, it's quite distinctive um, with a, a nice, I don't know what you slaty blue gray head and back. Well, it retains that in the fall. It also retains that olive patch on these on the, the back. And, and northern perulas are noted for turning upside down a lot when they're feeding. So they're on a branch and they're turning upside down. You see that, that olive green patch, boop, a couple of wing bars, the yellow on the throat. Now in the spring, the males will have blue rust color of going across this upper breast. And you can see it's much more subdued in the fall. And then these, this broken eye ring or eye arcs. So you see a white above the eye, white below the eye. Yes, and one other thing. This is one of our few, if only, maybe only warbler with the two-tone beak. The upper mandible is dark and the lower mandible is light in color, kind of yellowish to pinkish, which blends in with that throat. So that's kind of an interesting thing to notice if you hadn't noticed that before. This might be one of our tougher warblers to identify. Um, spring, they can be bright yellowish green or they can be a dull gray green. We don't, I don't see them very often in the spring, but they do come through. Uh, you see a bit, a little bit of a dark eye line, but you also see some, some arcs above and below the eye, even in this duller bird down below. In beak, but the main thing is they are a late fall arrival. Look for them in October. Now, yes, birds do do have wings, they can be blown about by the wind. So gosh, if some come in in, uh, in September, that's a possibility. But really, they are, are much more of an October bird, mid to late October. And I tend to see them foraging in fields that have goldenrod that has gone to seed. And these birds are just flitting from goldenrod head to goldenrod head, and they're like little fluffy seed heads and poking through them for insects and other invertebrates that may be stuck in there. The important thing is that these birds will have a yellow undertail in no matter what plumage. So this one, I will admit, is a tough one, but it doesn't change from spring to fall. All right, I'm going to put these two together a Tennessee warbler, which we're going to see in the birds that change a lot, and the orange crown. So the Tennessee warbler on the left, orange crown on the right. They, they can look a lot alike, um, but you notice the Tennessee is much more of a, hmm, a green color on its head, back, wings. It does have this, the, the broken eye arcs, it does have a little bit of an eyebrow, but notice under the tail, it's white. Whereas the orange crown will have yellow. Even dull orange crown warblers will have yellow under tail coats. Ha ha, this is where that, that Birds of the Cleveland Region book came in handy. So if you look over at Tennessee Warbler, and then up at the top, you have the months, so the Tennessee warbler coming in much, much earlier, and you can see the bar is thinner uh, and then gets really wide. So a lot more birds moving through and then gets thin again. And then look at the orange crowned warbler. And th these few dots here in the spring mean, again, it's not 
usually a, a common migrant through here. In the fall, um, you can see late September, but through October and even into November. So there's, there's quite a shift there uh, of these two species. Ovenbird, easy peasy, doesn't change one bit. So it's, it's a fun bird to look for. Again, it likes to forage on the ground, very much like the water thrushes. Pine warbler, I'll tell you, I had a tough decision. Do I put this in the change a, a lot or change very little? Well, the adult birds don't change much at all. All right, so uh, up in the top here, a spring bird, probably a female since it doesn't have quite as many stripes on it. Um, it is one of our larger warblers. The male can be very bright with lots of a lot more streaking on it. Females can be bright as well. Um, here's a bird that's a little more dull. Ugh, look at this bird at the bottom. Really? If I saw that, I'd throw my hands up and I'm like, I don't know. This is where I'd have to look for certain things. First of all, it's got a couple of wing bars. Do I see any striping here? Well, I don't know. It looks like the bird is really just kind of fluffed up, but man, that is like one dull bird. Oh, oh, but look at, I see a little bit of an eye arc above and below the eye. So if I saw this bird and was stumped, I'd really notice a few things. First of all, dull, 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 but I'd say, oh, it's got two wing bars, aha. Right, the adults, the, the ones that you see above, they have two wing bars. It's got the eye arcs above and below. Hmm. So I could weed out certain species. And not that many species are quite that dull. But again, you may run into one of these really rather gray birds. Um, they can be found here in the winter time. Sometimes they can come to bird feeders, especially suet. So you get warblers in the winter, very few, but there are a couple. Prothonotary warbler, gosh, I don't know if I've ever seen one in the fall because they are pretty much gone by September, but they don't change at all spring to fall. Um, oh, and that also kind of gives me an idea that, um, you know, if you're out looking for warblers, don't just start in September, get out in, in August. Uh, these, these birds are going to be moving through. And uh, so this one, the, this species is probably not going to be seen very much from, from now on through the fall. Wilson's warbler really doesn't change much. Yes, the females and the hatchier birds may not have as distinctive a cap. Um, but then you'll say, well, wow, that has an awful lot of green on its back. So can I maybe mistake it for a yellow warbler if it doesn't have much of a cap? They're sl smaller than a yellow warbler, uh, really a different color yellow, um, and then much more olive green on the back. Usually birds have just that uh, smudge of dark on the cap. So I think you'll be able to really make that, that distinction. And Wilson's warblers are coming through now. Yellow warblers tend to be a little earlier migrant. Yes, there will be some yellow warblers that do uh, hang around and uh, a little bit later. And there's the yellow warbler. I'm just going to flip back and forth. Look at the bright yellow that is. Not quite as bright. Of course, again, that could be the photograph, the, the, the way that it was photographed. Um, again, really don't change from spring to fall. The males do have these uh, reddish streaks on the breast. Females can have much fewer, and young can have zero. But everything is. Yellow, yellow head, yellow breast, yellow wings, yellowish back, yellow tail, yellow, 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 and a black beady eye. 
and like I said, mentioned, um, they are a fairly early migrant. Uh, there are going to be some stragglers into September, but watch for them. And yellow-throated warbler, no change from spring to fall. Uh, this one again as an early migrant. Uh, and they do like to favor streams and rivers with sycamore trees lining that waterway. On migration though, they could be found just about anywhere. But an early migrant, I think I've only seen one fall bird in the Cuyahoga Valley, again, along the, the canal. And I just don't run into them very often. Okay, so here's the warblers that do change. And one, two, three, four, five, six. And I've doubled up on the Connecticut in morning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, so not very many. Okay, bay breasted warbler. This and the and the black pole are very easily confused, but so we're gonna try to separate it out. And you can see a nice spring male black um, uh, bay breasted. And here is the fall bay breasted, top and bottom. Um, they look pretty different. So you see much more greenish, greenish yellow on the head and back. The, they do have light wing bars. Please do notice the underside. They can be quite creamy. And actually this bird up top, top right, you can even see just a little bit of that buffy bay on the, on the flank here. This one is, a, I don't see it at all, but again, there are a couple of other things that will lead me to bay breast. Um, can have very faint to absolutely no streaks on the bird at all. And I can just see very faint ones. And this may be a young of the year bird. But here's an important thing. Gray legs, gray feet. Now you're probably thinking, oh, really? I'm going to be out there looking at birds' feet. First of all, I'm looking at the body. And I'm trying to, first of all, find the doggone bird jumping around in the tree behind leaves. And then I'm going to look for its feet. Yeah, you can do that. So gray legs and feet, because the next species, the black pole, has different color feet. So get a good look at this bird, much more yellow, creamy underneath. And they're, again, they're a good-sized warbler. Here's the black pole. Certainly looking a heck of a lot different from the spring bird and in the spring. Whoa, look at those legs and feet. Yellow, yellowish orange. Look at that, yellowish orange. But look in the fall. Yellow feet. And I can barely see the foot pads here, but there's yellow feet there. See, you've done it. Yay. All right, so let's, uh, let's kind of review these. Not as much yellow, but more of an olive head back, wings, more olivey, not quite the yellow that we saw with the bay breasted. The, uh, of course, somebody wants to call. Um, there's a lot more streaking on the birds. Okay. And then uh, the wing bars, has wing bars, eye line through the eye. You may not get eye arcs, but then there's those yellow feet or and or foot pads. So again, just like the um, bay breasted, it's a good sized warbler, just sorting out between if it's an olivey green on the top or more of a yellow, um, if it's buffy or creamy underneath versus a lighter or grayish underneath, stripes versus snow stripes, and then the feet. You've got it. Excellent. All right. 
Now let me just show you this. This is an absolutely fascinating slide, and I know a lot of folks already know about this, but black pole warblers will nest all the way up in Alaska, up in the, up in the um, boreal forest, even a little bit into the, the tundra. Uh, and then their southward flight takes them from that northern region across Alaska, uh, across Canada, and look at what one of the major crossroads where black poles come in the fall. Look at Ohio, whammo. We are a major place for them to rest, feed, fatten up. And boy, you have to get the fat because once these birds hit the coast, the Atlantic coast, they are over the ocean making nonstop flight because there is no place to land on the ocean, maybe on some ships out there, but there is no place to land until they get to South America. Boom. So at banding stations, these birds can really chunk up. They can be very plump and which is good. Being fat is good. And these birds will use, utilize all that fat on that nonstop migration of a couple days over the Atlantic until they get to South America. That is like amazing. If we could get the gas mileage out of our gasoline, that would be awesome. Now in the spring, they don't take this route. In the spring, they kind of meander up uh, Central America and then fan out over uh, Canada and into Alaska. I know a number of them come through Ohio, which is good in the spring, because that's what they look like in the spring. But this is an amazing bird. Of course, all birds are amazing. Black Bernie and Warbler, again, it was a toss up. Do I put this in the change a little or change a lot? Well, you certainly are not going to see the bright orange Cheeto head, I mean, the Cheeto coloration on the Blackburnian, uh, like you see in the spring. But in the fall, you can still see hints of the color. This black triangle behind the eye, the orange or buffy uh, eyebrow, same thing with the yellowish to orange is throat and breast, and then the faint black streaks. Um, so it's fairly easy to identify, but it can change, um, especially again, the young of the year, they're not going to really notice quite as much orangish coloration, but look for that tri black triangle behind the eye, two wing bars and the streaking on the flanks. Kate May Warbler. Here's a nice spring bird in the upper left, a fall bird, the upper right, and that's a pretty bright fall bird. Um, they have lots of these little stre streaks across the breast and the flanks. Um, you may even still see a bit of that yellow patch that's behind the, kind of on the side of the neck. Look at on the adult or on the uh, spring bird, that big yellow patch behind the the head or on the side of the neck. It still is visible. Oh no, what if we look at this one at the bottom, on bottom right? Oh, another dull gray bird, oh no. But wait a minute, there's a couple things to look for. Um, streaking on the breast. Um, they're not called Cetophica tigrina for nothing. Uh, tigrina, little tiger. You got all those, those little streaks on the breast. Um, I don't see any patch of yellow on the side. Some, a lot of juvies will still show that or young of the year birds will show that. Uh, dark line through the eye, but again, a gray bird. So grab your field guides, start looking in the field, kind of take some mental notes. If you have a camera, click some pictures and you should be able to uh, be able to tell the, the uh, Cape May warbler in the fall as compared with the uh, pine warbler that we saw. Pine warbler is a bigger bird. So, but if you don't have these birds next to each other, how are you going to know bigger versus smaller?
One of my faves is the chestnut-sided warbler. Ooh, look at it in the spring. But ooh, look at it in the fall. They are pretty, actually pretty doggone distinctive, even though they change quite a bit. Um, the one, the lower right one shows a male in the fall, and he still has a bit of that streaking on the flank. So that's pretty easy. But do notice that they have that chartreuse green yellow cap, which can extend down the back of the neck onto the back. The upper right bird shows it a little bit better. It's this really unusual chartreuse green, whereas in the spring it's more of a yellow. But notice the face, the throat, and the breast. Everything is kind of pale gray. I don't know of any other warbler that has quite a plain face like that. And a nice white eye ring. So really these birds are, are, I think they're easy to ID in the fall, even though they change quite a bit. Connecticut morning warblers, well, they usually skulk around on the ground in the spring. They can in the fall, but I've seen more mornings in vegetation, in trees, in uh, some of the goldenrod fields and stuff like that. So let's take a look at these two birds in the fall. Connecticut, yellow underneath. Normally, Connecticut's would have a gray hood. And you can see a little bit of that hood still remaining on the up to, down the breast. But look at that eye ring, boing, boing, boing. Nice, bright eye ring. It may not be quite as large, but it's going to be an, a complete eye ring. The morning warbler, yes, they're kind of a more grayish, but they can be olive on the back, yellow underneath, and they can be much brighter yellow than this but not quite the complete hood going across the breast. Sometimes you'll find a male bird with that, that uh, a little darker markings across here, but you're not gonna find uh, a morning with uh, a complete eye ring. You're gonna see a broken eye ring or, or eye arcs. A little bit of white or bright color above and below the eye. This one's pretty dull. I've seen them that are much brighter. And these are fairly early migrants too. Um, so they begin their migration late August, September. They're pretty much gone through. Um, I kind of keep a track of the, the um, lights out data that comes through. And a number of morning warblers have struck buildings already downtown, even in, uh, in August, they picked up a few. Magnolia, nice bright spring bird on the left, upper left, and really washes out in the fall. Uh, you don't get that dark black, uh, but what do you see? Well, you see yellow underneath. You see two wing bars. I see a grayish head and a, an olive back, yellow underneath like a, like a, a Nashville. But remember, Nashvilles don't have wing bars, okay? You see an eye ring. And here's an important thing, both male and female. You can tell because their tail has been dipped in ink or in black paint. Half the, the bottom half or the, the distal half of the, the tail is black and up closer to the body, it is white. So that's a nice view right there. I like that view. Palm warbler, hmm, nice spring bird. Again, on the upper left, fall bird, upper right. Oh, look at this lower left bird. Another one of those gray birds. Oh no. So that can be a toughie. Um, so they can have a, a gray to a brownish gray body in the fall. The rump is yellow. So the upper part back here is yellow and the undertail coverts are yellow. Hmm, that's something to look for. 
dark line through the eye. You may see streaking, but again, on this young of the year or juvenile bird, I don't really see much streaking, but I do see yellow under tail coverts. I do see them. I do see the stripe through the eye. Here's something to watch for. They wag their tail up and down. So they'll bob their tail like that. They do that in the spring and they'll do that in the fall. So if you see one land on a tree, you know, make its tail go up and down. Now this one's a tough one, I will admit. Tennessee warbler, I showed this, uh, or a Tennessee along with the orange crown, remember in the, the earlier slides, uh, Tennessees do change quite a bit. Spring bird, they have the gray head, the olive green back and white or white underneath. Um, in the fall, they all pretty much turn a, a yellowish green on the head, back, wings, um, white under tail coverts. So, and then can be yellowish to grayish underneath. Uh, they have a black stripe through the eye. A uh, little pale eyebrow, even, even like an eye arc. You can see the broken eye ring or eye arcs. But again, they're, that yellowish green color on their head, wings back, um, no wing bars. So really it's pretty easy to tell. And yellow rumped warbler. This is a bird that tends to come through a little later, although people have uh, found them really now, uh, late, let's see, it was late August that people have been reporting a couple of them. There's the early birds, I guess. So the spring bird on the upper left, nice bright grays, blue gray, black, white, yellow. Fall, hmm, more, much more brown. And this is a large, a pretty good sized warbler. Um, it retains that yellow rump. It retains yellow spots on the sides of the breast. They may not be as, as big and bright and distinctive. They actually also have a yellow little crown at the top. Uh, I can't see it on these particular fall birds. I, I noticed the yellow rump and the yellow spot on the side of the breast. Uh, wing bars. Um, they do make a distinctive chip sound um, in the winter, especially if you're out in the winter, you, you might hear their distinctive sharp chip note. And please don't get rid of all the poison ivy. These birds do love the fruits of poison ivy in the winter. So if you see poison ivy fruits on, a, on some vines up in a tree, now look around, there may be a, a yellow rumped warbler uh, about uh, because they do feed a lot on fruits. And this is again, one of the few warblers that can be found here in the winter time. Much, much, much more brown. Okay, um, I don't know, Marianne, are there any questions that we, that we see? Don't hear any. No, okay. All right, so are you ready for the quiz? Mm. If you are, then perhaps you would like to get grab a pencil, a paper, uh, write on your hand. Just keep things in your mind. I got 10 birds that are going to be on the quiz. You're ready, I'm gonna start. There's two birds per slide. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna try my luck too. I'll give you a few moments. And then again, if you'd like to put your answers in the chat or an answer in the chat. All 
All right. So, got your binoculars out? Oh, somebody. Ah, not there. Okay. So, number one, I'm going to give you the answers now. Number one is the American Red Start. This one happens to be a male. It's got a little bit more oranges to this side little spot here, but looks like a female. If you're out in the field, you might call it a female. That would be fine. Um, bird, I don't think the bird minds at all, but you know, if you're just identifying, that's okay. That is fine. But grayish, got the yellow on the wing, got a little bit of that spot on the side and yellow in the tail. Yay. Number two, I like this one. Look at, look at the bird's feet. They're hopping. It's hopping. This is, it's got those stripes on the head, which we did not see in the water thrush. Remember the water thrush have an eyebrow. So this is an oven bird. They don't change. Yay, all right. Good for you. All right. Here's three and four. Give you a few moments. By the way, all of these photos are provided by Tom Fishburn. A number of the photos uh, in the identification were also provided by Tom Fishburn. Give you a few more moments. And again, type in the chat if you think you know. Ooh. All right. So, number three is the yellow rumped warbler. Again, much more brown in the fall, got the wing bars, yellow rump, yellow spot on the side, and I can see a little bit of yellow on the crown too. So there's our yellow rump warbler. Oh, and you know what? This photo from number four looks like a spring photo because those leaves are pretty new. So this is probably a female and it's yellow, yellow, yellow yellow. So it's a yellow. yellow warbler. Yes, very good. All right. Yep. No, I don't see any of the little red streaks. So yellow warbler, it is. Five and six. You should just be breezing by these. These are just like so easy, right? Number five was with it, don't change very much. Number six changes a lot, but still identifiable, usually. All right, number five, common yellow throat. Yay! That one, that one's pretty easy. Number six, ooh, this one's a little tougher, but I see some things. Well, I see wing bars. I see like a little patch here that's lighter. Ooh. I see a little bit of buffy going down the flank. Oh, and I see gray legs and feet. So that is our bay breasted warbler. Now this photo shows it a lot greener. If 
here rather than the yellower. But there's other things, other features. Again, the feet, that patch behind the, the head, on the side of the neck, uh, buffy along the flank, the wing bars. Good job, everybody. All right. Gosh, I had to think on these. Hmm. All right. So number seven. Kind of yellowish underneath. Even this eyebrow is yellowish, not quite as white, but if you have nothing to compare it with, it's hard to tell. And that eyebrow doesn't change in width from front to back. So that's the northern water thrush. Yay, good job. Number eight. Wow. Kind of looks like that yellow warbler, doesn't it? Got a beady eye. Oh, but wait. Let's see this dark color going all the way front of the forehead, over the head, even coming around. Hooded warbler, you got it. All right. Hooded warbler, fantastic. All right, the last two. Oh, no. Oh. No, number 10 looks like it's not quite in focus, but that's okay. I could have put in all kinds of photos in here that were blurry, birds in flight, just a tail. <laughs> but I wouldn't do that to you guys. Nice. Okay, so number nine is that late arrival in the fall, the orange crowned warbler. A uh, little bit of an ice tree, kind of a just uniform olivey. Hard to tell if that's just, a, a, now this is a spring picture, by the way. Uh, hard to tell if that's yellow under the tail or if there was a leaf in front that was kind of made it look a little bit more yellow. But uh, actually I can see just a hint of an orange crown here too, just a little bit. And then number 10, I just like this picture. I just like the way the bird is like, what? And look at that olive uh, back, that kind of blue gray head, wings, eye mm. arcs. That's the Northern Perula, yay. So 10 out of 10, right? Yeah, good. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, some of the resources, that field book of the uh, Birds of the Cleveland Region, which is that small green book with the barcode, the Peterson guide, uh, Sibley guide, the Warbler guide itself, and Warblers of the Americas. Oh, I didn't pull that one out. That one's a nice one as well, too. Uh, a couple of websites. Um, if you go to the Black Swamp Bird Observatory website, which is just www.bsbo.org, and then you can find information on their bird migration profiles, when birds are coming through. Again, almost like a bar graph, uh, but it, it tends to be more for the Northwest part of the state, um, but it can still be useful. Uh, Cornell's All About Birds, the McGill Bird Observatory, 
and the bird watching downloadable ID guide uh, from bird watching. And so these are all really useful things. And I think you can just, um, so for the bird watching downloadable ID guide is www.birdwatchingdaily.com. And then you can kind of look through and find out where their guide might be that you can download. Oh, somebody mentions that the Stokes Field Guide to Warblers uh, has good first year birds. Yep, I should I should look at that as well too. Thank you so much. All right. So get out there, do some birding, whether it's spring, fall, winter, no matter what. Come out with us in Western Cuyahoga Audubon. We have a couple of walks that are done uh, monthly at the second Saturday bird walk at Rocky River Reservation. We do an evening walk and we'll have a couple more evening walks, one in September, one in October. And we do walks in the Tremont on the Scranton Flats. Uh, that is on the fourth Saturday of the month, not the last Saturday, but the fourth Saturday at nine o'clock. You can find all that information on the website. And we want to thank everybody, those members and guests who joined us this evening long time as well as new birders, Tom Fishburn, uh, Kelly Colgan Azar, and Cornell's All About Birds for use of the photos. And of course, we have to really thank the birds themselves. It really makes it enjoyable uh, being outdoors. All right, and thank you everybody. There's our website, www.wcaudubon.org. All right. So with that, um, again, if, if people would want to unmute and have a question that they'd like to ask, I know some things have come in, in the chat. Something here. Uh, thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Anybody have something that they want to add? Mary Ann, did you have anything? Um, no, I just want to thank you, Nancy, for doing a wonderful job. I, I learned I learned a lot. And, you know, the, for those folks who did sign up to go on the field experiences, which, again, unfortunately is sold out, um, you know, and, and if you run into me on the trail somewhere, um, you know, I don't know all the warblers either. I mean, I, I make errors. Hopefully not all the time, but but I, I do a pretty darn good job and I try to to really share this information with folks. So I do hope that, you know, if you are do see me on the trail, I tend to go to Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve a lot. Um, haven't stopped by Wendy Park. Um, let's see, Marianne said she was at Sheldon's Marsh and the, and the uh, warblers were pretty good there. Uh, pay attention to wet weather patterns again any north winds northwest north northeast will move birds down from canada so and look at that um birdcast.info site because you'll see some really really good stuff there too play around with it thank and you. i want to thank everybody for the evening uh so have a great evening have great birding and i better oh, better stop recording how about that Thank you, everyone.